Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to learn how states bargain with each other in the shadow of war with complete information. And here's the game. A begins by demanding X of some utility both states desire, which is valued at 1. B can either accept or reject that offer. If B accepts, A gets X and B gets the rest. If B rejects, the states fight a war. So the way we simulate war is by having nature make a move. Nature is a robotic actor without any preferences. Usually it's simulating something like a die roll or coin flip or something of that sort. Here it's choosing whether A or B wins the war. You will see that A wins with probability P and B wins with probability 1 minus P. So if A were an extremely strong state, P would be something like 0.8 or 80%. If A were a weaker state, P would be something like 0.3 or 30%. What's interesting is that the states know how likely each of them is to win the war, but they don't know who will win until they actually fight. They also probably want to avoid fighting if at all possible, as fighting incurs these costs called CA and CB, which simulate lost economic pro productivity, destroyed property, and loss of life. Obviously the cost of war is going to be greater than zero. So these positive costs, CA and CB, are ultimately subtracted away from their utility of fighting. So if you win a war, you're going to get 1 minus whatever your cost was for fighting. You're going to get less than 1. So how do A and B resolve this issue? Well, game theory has a nice trick you can use here. If nature is the last actor to make a move in a game, you can simply calculate the expected outcome of nature's move, then eliminate nature from the game. What does that mean? Well, A knows that P percentage of the time he will get the value for winning, uh, which is 1 minus CA. He also knows that 1 minus P percentage of the time he will get the value for losing, which is negative CA. Fortunately, we can simplify that expression in the manner you see on your screen, which leaves us with a much nicer looking P minus CA. Now we need to repeat this process for B, and that simplifies to 1 minus P minus CB. Now that we've found each of the player's expected utilities, we can change the game from this to this. And I think you'll agree that this version is easier to solve. In fact, it looks a lot like the ultimatum game, so perhaps we can use the logic from that game to solve the crisis bargaining model you see on your screen. Note that to induce B to accept, A will have to make 1 minus X equal to 1 minus P minus CB. That follows from the trick with mathematical limits we used in the continuous version of the ultimatum game. We should also note that A doesn't really have incentive to give B any more than that, since that will only take away from A's final payoff. So let's assume that 1 minus x equals 1 minus p minus cb. We can simplify that equation and solve for x, which yields p plus cb. Thus, it looks like A is going to offer P plus CB, or X is going to equal P plus CB. And we need to test that by looking back to the extensive form of the game and isolating A's payoffs. So we're looking to prove some sort of relation between these two figures. P is a common term between them, so we can subtract those from both sides of the equation. And because the costs of war are always positive, as we said earlier, CB is always going to be greater than negative CA. Put differently, if you took two positive numbers and you made one of them negative, then the positive one is always going to be greater. Here we just demonstrated that by using C's to represent those numbers. So in equilibrium, A demands P plus CB, B accepts, and the states resolve this crisis without going to war. Now it's obvious that not all crises end in bargained resolutions. So in later videos, we'll explore how bargaining can fail. And one of those ways is with incomplete information. And that will be how we will introduce incomplete information models into this lecture series. I'll talk to you then.